Okay, now we're going to look at some advanced circuit transformation techniques. Now, we've already touched upon circuit transformation. Two things we learned how to do. We learned how to combine sources together. So for example, we saw how voltage sources in series and current sources in parallel, we could add those together to create a single source. We also saw how to combine series parallel combinations of resistors. And we saw how we could go through and we could combine those together and make a single equivalent resistor. So we've already learned how to do some very simple kinds of transformations. What we want to do now is kind of look at a larger scope. See how we can apply the concept of circuit transformation to a much more complex circuit. So the question is this. Why do we want to transform a circuit? What's the reason for these techniques we're going to spend some time on? Well, let's look at it this way. Let's say I've got a circuit. And this is a very complex linear circuit. In other words, it's a circuit that contains a lot of elements, a lot of nodes. So I've got a very complex linear circuit that has multiple sources, multiple resistors, multiple nodes in that circuit. And I'm going to connect a resistor to two nodes in that circuit. So I'm going to kind of pull a couple of wires out. And I'm going to connect a load resistor. I'm going to call that R load to that circuit. I'm going to label these nodes. A and B. And if I connect that resistor to this circuit, I'll be able to measure a voltage and current associated with that resistor. There'll be some low voltage V load I can measure, and there'll be some current I load, which I can calculate using Ohm's law. Okay, now let's assume I don't really care what goes on inside that circuit. What I care about is the load resistor. If I apply a load resistor to this circuit, I want to know what happens to the voltage and the current. And I have a whole bunch of different values of our load that I want to test. So say I've got 100 different values. So I have to go and apply each R load, go through and do all the calculations for this circuit, get the answer, put in the next load resistor, do all the calculations, get the answer, and so forth. So every time I change the value of R load, I have to recalculate everything in the circuit. As it turns out, there is a simpler way. I'm going to perform a circuit transformation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this circuit with a simpler circuit, with an equivalent but simpler, in other words, fewer elements, fewer nodes, linear circuit. And if I do this transformation correctly, I'll have the same two nodes, A and B, still available to me. And if I connect the same R load across those two nodes, I should get exactly the same voltage and current. 
And that's the important part. For both of these circuits, for both the simple, the simple equivalent linear circuit and the original more complex linear circuit, if I connect the load resistor across it, I get the same V load, same I load. So what I've done is I've got a circuit that as far as the load is concerned works exactly the same. But it's compute computationally much easier. Now if I have a hundred different load resistors, this can be a much, much simpler circuit to solve than this one was. So what I've done is I've created a simple linear equivalent that makes it much easier for me to figure out all the different values of V-load. This kind of transformation to create a simpler linear model is something that happens all the time in engineering, not just in circuits, but everywhere. The idea of taking something very complex and creating something that is equivalent but much, much easier to analyze. In fact, as you remember, we did that with the defibrillator example. We showed how a defibrillator could be modeled just as a voltage source in series with a resistor. Same thing with a battery. Well, we're going to take that same idea and we're going to apply it to any circuits we want. So any type of circuit with any sources in it, any elements in it, we can go and we can do a transformation. There are two techniques we're going to spend time learning. First technique of circuit transformation is called source transformation. The second technique is called Thevenin's Theorem. So we are in particular going to spend time on Thevenin's Theorem. This is a, an extremely useful tool for analysis. In fact, if you take a more advanced course in circuit analysis, for example, learning how to design transistor or diode circuits, you're going to find the two most important things you're going to use are going to be nodal analysis and Thevenin's theorem. So we're definitely going to learn about Thevenin's theorem and you're going to be, you know, seeing how that technique works and how we apply either, once again, either nodal or mesh analysis, but we, those are the tools we use to apply Thevenin's theorem and source transformation. So next time we'll come back and we'll first look at source transformation.